Hey folks, welcome back to Let's Play LSD. I'm your host, CPC Gamer, and before we begin with today's episode, I'm going to show off something a little bit new. After I record, it takes a short while for the video to process on my computer, and while it's doing that, I hit the flashback option on the game's main menu. Now, flashback is an option that reloads some of the settings, tile sets, and music patterns that you've experienced, and I do it so I can get a quick little refresher on the game. Now usually, when the Grey Man catches you, like at the end of the last episode, the flashback option is removed, it deletes every memory it has stored thus far, and it won't let you try it, but for whatever reason, the option is still there. And I'm still here! This is the parking lot, like the end of the last episode. And yeah, that, that's all flashback mode is, it basically shows you a series of photographs. Point is, I tried it a couple of times, and each time it has shown me the same thing. That thing. Now, I thought it was random, and it usually feels like it is, but... Yeah, that sure is something. And now I'm back in the real world. I've been playing so much Minecraft lately, I want to take it apart and rearrange it. And it struck me recently, I've done a lot of building in the game, but most of the stuff I've built is transport nodes to other transport nodes, which occasionally connect the mines if it's convenient. But there's very little actual mining going on. And it kind of sucks. Not long after I recorded the video showing off my Minecraft build, I spent about two weeks expanding it and adding even more content. Now I feel like... Popular video game development team. And you might think that was me trying not to date my joke by way of being non-committal, but... Nope. Just couldn't think of what I was going to say. I'm gonna link with the linking tunnel, but the backside. Something they didn't think we'd look at, so they didn't even give it a flat color. Forget a texture. Poor neglected exit. And you know what? This is why I need to get my sister involved with more of these videos. Because when I'm left to my own devices, I find myself sympathizing with polygons. Instead of, you know, actually producing coherent and reasonable sentences like I tend to do when there's two of us. Now, you could argue that it's some skill or intelligence that I can keep this going on my own, but you could also argue that it is just babbling. Especially since I'm not talking about the game, or symbolism, or anything like that. Which is a shame, because I love it when I can do that. I like pretending to be the smartest guy in the room, you know? Alright, train. See what you look like when you hit this corner. There are modern games that can't get this right. Let's see how you fare. Oh, and speaking of being the smartest guy in the room, I've actually considered... LPing Rule of Rose lately, and that looks pretty good for this era. Well done, game! Anyways, no, I want to play Rule of Rose, not so much so I can go, Behold, I possess the Forbidden Tome, but more so that I can play it and gush all over it. Because I can guarantee you, 90% of the commentary would just be me going, Man, look at all this symbolism! It's pouring out of my PS2 CD tray, and it, it's falling all over the floor. It's, it's so good. It's depressing as all hell, I'll grant you that, but it is beautifully designed. And besides, sometimes you need to play something that's just... emotionally draining. I, mean, I think this is my version of when my sister watches weepy movies. You know, she's got Pride and Prejudice, or Romeo and Juliet, Whereas I sit down to play Silent Hill 2 and Rule of Rose. And I think that's a fair analogy, actually. Because those two games, especially Silent Hill 2, they are just masterful storytellers. Like, when I played The Suffering, I mentioned how it's one of my favorite games in terms of replays and the amount of times I've come back to it. But my friends will tell you that Silent Hill 2 probably is my favorite game, because once I start, it's very hard to get me to shut up about it already, Andy. We know. It's about Eros and Thanatos. Just move on. It's an interesting thing. 
I don't think I could ever do a top 10 favorites video because the things that I enjoy playing change depending on my mood. I mean, I recently binged on Payday 2 because the update arrived and I could get the leveling up rewards in a number of days, not several months like it would have taken before. But now I'm kind of sick of it. I mean, I enjoy playing OutRun, but I haven't touched it since I recorded it for you guys. But, despite the fact that my tastes keep changing, the top of my top 10 list is easily Silent Hill 2. And then The Suffering, and then Fatal Frame 1, and then Hello Kitty's Island Adventure. And I'm just gonna condemn myself to the pit for that so we can pretend I never said it. I mean, I actually have considered doing a video counting down my favorite games, but... Heck, who even cares, right? Or... Is this me missing the point and not doing something that people actually really do want to see? I don't know. Whatever. Let's go again. See what day two on two brings. My guess? Text that horribly derails my train of thought. Oh, well, apparently not. But I kind of pre-derailed my train of thought anyway, so this might take me a little bit. Why do I always feel that the Grey Man is going to show up whenever I'm presented with a wide, open crossroad tableau like that? I mean, yes, pessimism and experience, but... Actually, no, those are really good reasons. So, let's go with those. I mean, as you may have seen in Shuchimi, I can be a pretty paranoid guy sometimes. So what you get for being such a huge fan of survival horror games? And psychological horror in general, I suppose. I mean, that is something else putting me off doing some kind of ranking video. The vast majority would be, you know, survival horror to varying degrees, and it might get a little bit old. Hey, maybe this is actually my countdown video, just in disguise. I am never entirely sure what that is on top of the pagoda. I mean, it looks like it could be a spire, but I'm pretty sure the Japanese pagodas don't have spires. They, they just have the pyramid-shaped roof. Ah, what do I know? I'm not a Japanese architect, and nor am I a particular fan of said. I think you misfired a bit there, sound effect. I mean, I know I give this game a lot of leeway because it's old and an, I think it's an indie title, actually. But how hard would it have been to set it up so that the bell only rings when struck? Really now. Also, way to show through the outside structure, bell. I mean, it's never good when games get perspective and scaling on like that, even though it can lead to some pretty funny moments. I'm not ready to give up on this stupid easter egg if it's not going to spawn for me. I also have to look into not talking to the game as if it can hear me. Hmm. Whatever. Back to wandering along whatever road I am currently wandering along. Wandering and rambling. My new spoken word album, available now on iTunes. I know I've joked a lot lately about how, how nothing I write is really any good. This is another stumbling block that I'm pretty sure I'll run into. When I actually do produce something worthwhile, I would feel bad for charging for it, like I was ripping you guys off. So thank goodness none of my projects never really go anywhere, so I'll never really need to worry about it. I have no idea where I'm going around about now. Let's see if I can... Um, A. Nag the woman up on the balcony again. B. Fall through the balcony like I did last time. I don't know why I fell down versus staying up there the last however many times, but it's going to be interesting to find out what makes it trigger. If anything. Okay. What do you got for me, game? Hopefully it's something. And not nothing. Looks like nothing. But maybe I have the wrong set of balconies. Does this one do anything? No. No, it does not. But what if I go this way? See, clearly, this is a case of direction. Like that one little tunnel in Castlevania where you have to go through it as a wolf, but only to the left? How on earth do people even find that out? And I guess the game isn't going to do anything. 
but that's okay. Sometimes we need a zen moment of nothing happening to remind us that life sucks. There's your lesson, Brandon. Go enjoy it. Ooh, I'm gonna go nag the crazy face over here. Specifically, I'm gonna head inside the linking tunnel right here, and I'm gonna see if I can trigger the face through the wall. Uh, just to see if it has a cone of awareness, or if it's a radius. I like shapes. Oh, I heard a sound. I think that means he's... On to us. Aw. Bye, face. One of the nicest comments I've ever received about this series is somebody mentioning how sad I sounded when I said goodbye to that face in a previous video. I kind of take this thing to heart sometimes. Wait, the natural world? I didn't know this music played out there. I thought this was Happy Town or something. You know, UFOs aside. Let's try linking, see if I actually go there. Or at least somewhere with more interactivity. Oh hey! And there you go! And it's actually nice and bright too. The last place was kinda nice and bright too, but that's beside the point. I really don't like how I can hear that opera singer echoing around the place. It's like a nightmare. Like I have literally had nightmares where there is a prevailing sound echoing around me and I cannot escape. Usually it's laughter or incoherent babbling. Actually, I'm gonna go take a look at that guy, just to, to check something out. The ghost in the violence district, or ghosts, plural, I guess, they have triangles instead of heads, and I think it is the same design as this guy. If we're looking at it, this triangle is pointing down, while the ghost's head is pointing up, like pyramid head. Now see, I'd assumed that the triangle was indicative of a head, given its placing on the singer's model. It would mean that the ghosts have been decapitated if this hypothesis followed through. However, since the triangles are upside down, I don't know what to make of it. I do know that I'm very stubbornly not going to go down the pit today, and I'm going to go this way instead. Maybe I can screw around with the sumo guys, in a manner of speaking, or not. You know, I do have a suggestion on my notes here. See what happens if you can get one guy to start fighting you, and then ring out yourself? But that's not happening when the game won't spawn them for me. Man, what is up with this music? Like, if you follow the idea that this map is somehow related to the womb, the mixture of laughter and screaming in the music is pretty horrifying if you think of the implications. And the game seems to agree, hurrying me out of there like... Something quick. I don't know. I'm not good at thinking up analogies on the fly. Since I'm back here, something I've wondered about this game and its apparent progression. If Greyman erases the data stored in the game's... Well, LTM bank, for lack of a better phrase, does it also reset all of the flags? Hey, guy. You're looking pretty good. You lose weight? But yeah, that is, if you begin the game in the house, does the guy in the bedroom always show up if you bow your head? Now, I don't think that's something I'm likely to find out without getting very unlucky, and then very lucky shortly afterwards. And given that getting lucky is something that never, ever happens, I think we can safely rule it out. Alright, I know your trick's gonna, Dan. You're not gonna sneak up on me again. In fact, I'm not even going to go into your warehouse. I'm going this way. Alright. There is only the one of you. I wonder what it is about this warehouse in particular that attracts the gunners. Or the one at the end lately, because that, that's been getting pretty aggressive lately, too. You have anything? Nothing here. I wonder if those little ghosties are going to show up in this last warehouse. I really hope so, because I kind of want something to do while I'm out here. Hello, warehouse. Can I get a witness? Oh, come on, game. Be a sport. Although I do hear the chiming bell sound, 
which usually donates that something nearby has changed. Usually, the ghost appearing in warehouse number two, so... Let's go and have a look at that, why not? And don't mind me not running. I'm just... a little bit afraid of the Grey Man. Alright, so let's... Car? Oh, hey, this thing's happening again! Awesome! Kinda. I mean, we're gonna have a bit of a slow section, because I'm gonna follow this thing and see where it goes. Or follow it as far as I can before the game decides I need to go someplace else. I mean, you know how this thing goes. Oh, hey! Now I get to finish the thought that I began a very long time ago in an LSD episode, far, far away. Doing this reminds me of the slowest punch-out password scene that I ever did see. Which, come to think about it, doesn't make any sense, because that takes place in New York, and during the day, and Doc Lewis rides a bike, not driving a car. So, I mean, basically it's like punch-out in that one person is walking alongside a vehicle. And... nothing else, really. I just like Punch-Out! Jeez, this game! Made me jump! Which is why it is called a jump scare! And also why it isn't scary, because now the feeling has passed. Also, I'm still here. I didn't know that happened after watching the car crash. Maybe it's because I didn't watch the car crash, I just saw the aftermath, but... Hmm. Well, this thing's still going. So, do you reckon the car's gonna go through the wall at the end, or is it gonna... ...do something? Hurry along now, I want to see what happens. Ah, well then. That's some nice timing, LSD the Dream Emulator. This is a curious one, because it looks like they actually did program the AI to stop in the proper place. So this was meant to happen. Just... I don't know. Under some really esoteric set of circumstances that I don't know. And hey, when I describe this game as being esoteric, you know that it's a bizarre one, because this is some weird Japan-only junk. Oh, and I guess I'm waking up. See you later, Violence District. Good job on letting me see through the wall, too. And... I can see how that would be a true neutral dream. There was a lot of time spent in the violence district, but I didn't really do much, I just... walked alongside a car and then it vanished. And you know what? Yeah, let's do that again! What the heck? Last episode was pushing half an hour, so let's do it with this one, too! Well, I don't think it's going to be a text stream, otherwise it'd show up by now. Oh, hey. I will say hello to a literal wall of text, however. If only I knew your secrets. Let's head out the window. Go do something else instead. It's making me sad being surrounded by secrets I don't understand. You're very quiet tonight, game. I think that's a fitting end. You know, just a... a slow, quiet dream so I can end the video on a soft note, and what on earth is that on top of the building? That TV aerials, I guess? Yeah. Looks like those are TV aerials. Right. Well, what am I gonna do now? You know, I have seen a couple of screenshots of the hanging woman appearing beside that lamppost, not the one behind it, but I guess it is not to be. Whoa! Or maybe it is. Hey, game. How's it going? <laughs> <clears throat> so, yeah. Anyway, my, my issue with things like that jump scares, pop scares, whatever you want to call them, they startle, but they do not scare. Like, your gut reaction is to go, ah! but then after a second you go, oh, 
and move on. Now you look at Silent Hill 2, that game creates an atmosphere of crushing dread, I tell you what. And yes, I think I probably will marry Silent Hill 2. What of it? Actually, I probably won't, because as much as I love Silent Hill 2, I kind of get the impression that it doesn't love me back. Also, it is a video game, and not something that I can legally marry. But that's just a matter of time, what with the slippery slope argument and all. Yes, I often have thoughts of throwing myself down pits when I realise my love affair with Silent Hill 2 simply cannot be. You wouldn't understand. You're not my real dad. So, whatever. Join us next time for some more LSD, and until next time, goodbye!